Praise God. Let's all stand up and just honor God in this place because he alone is worthy of the honor. He alone is worthy of the praise. Father, we just honor you right now in this place. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we love you. We give you glory. I pray in the name of Jesus, let every word that is spoken here today be spirit breathed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I want to honor as well my pastor, Bogdan Badenko. If you could stand up, please. Uh, I just want to thank you for everything and uh, pursuing God and following him. If everyone can just stand up and honor him right now and pursuing God and starting this Bible school and just shaking a generation for God. You guys may be seated. I'm going to have you guys stand up a couple times. If I can have the brothers stand up as well of Living Stream Church, we want to honor you as well. Thank you very much for your service, for the generation and showing us a good example. And as well as I want to honor the last person, Boris, Pastor Boris, our youth pastor here at Living Stream Church. If you could stand up. If everyone can stand up and honor Boris in this place. He is truly a man after God's heart, and it's been an honor running with him and, and seeing him pursue God and raising up people, people after him, people after his face, people for prayers. You know, the trailer out here, I had several people come up to me and say, hey, Mark, I'm praying for you. Actually, a matter of fact, I had somebody come up to me and say, hey, I'm not going to sit in the service, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the prayer trailer, and while you're going to be preaching, I'm going to be standing and interceding for you. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve that will, is raising up a generation today, a generation that is after his face, and a generation that moves in prayer, that moves and breathes in Jesus' mighty name. My title today of the sermon, I really sat down and thought about it, and uh, I couldn't think of anything else but known. So the title today of this sermon is going to be called Known. If you can turn to somebody and just say known. Known is a recognize or, or to be fam familiar with something. So I believe that God here is speaking to every single person about what known is and, and different sides of known. Known and uh, knowing God and, and being known and making God known. Being known by God and making him known as well. I'm going to look into Daniel and, and looking into Daniel's life, I see different aspects of Daniel. If one man uh, sought after the face of God and knew God and, and was known by God, it was Daniel Daniel was a man that fasted and prayed and sought the Lord and, and, and just in weeping and trembling. And a, a good quote uh, a man of God told me before, he said, the truly hungry, they will fast. The truly hungry, they will fast. And Daniel was this man that truly sought, truly was hungry after God and to know God. Those of you that have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn into the book of Daniel. And we're going to go into reading a little bit. But before that, I'm going to explain what, was, what is happening here. Uh, it, what, what's happening, Daniel starts fasting. God uh, anoints him. He gives him these dreams, these visions and interpretations. And, and then... Um, the king has a, a dream, and it says that the king is anxious. He, he, he wants to understand what this dream means, but he can't figure it out. So he says, grab all the magicians, grab everybody wise that you know, and let's, let's bring them all together and see if they can bring this import, uh, interpretation to me of what this dream is. But I'm not going to tell them what my dream was. I want them to tell me what the dream was and also interpret the dream for me. So he gets all the wise men, all the magicians, everybody he can get. And nobody can translate this dream. Nobody can tell him of this dream. And they say, no man can do something like this. No man on this earth. And Daniel finds out about it. They actually started wiping out all the wise men of the place. And, and Daniel finds out and he, he goes to a guy and then he goes to the king. He says, hey, give me some time. Give me some time. I'm going to figure it out, but I'm going to make this known to you. But first, let me do this one thing. I'm going to go to my king. I'm going to go to my God. I'm going to seek after his face because he has, he has the answers to everything. So he gets a group of his friends and he goes in and he, he grabs them together. The Bible says he who's with the wise becomes wise. And so him and his friends come together. They come together because a promise of God where two or three gathered in my name, I am there. He knew if he grabs his friends, if he comes with his friends and starts to pray and, and ask God for this thing to be known, it will be known to him. And he 
begins to pray with his friends at night. And it says that in a night vision, it was revealed to him what this dream was. It was made known to him what this dream was. Those of you that have your Bibles open, Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. And this is the prayer that Daniel prays. We're going to read four verses, 20 to 23. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes the kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God my, of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. He desired for this dream to be made known to him. I want to ask you something here today. What is it that you want to be known in your life today? What is it that you're pursuing after today? What is it today that your heart longs after? What is it that fully satisfies you here today? What is it that equals known in your life today? Daniel goes to God. And, he, and he, if you read this prayer, it shows so much about God here. You can see that he knew God. He knew who his king was. He knew who his God was. Oh God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might and you have now made known to me. He gave him this dream. He gave him this interpretation. He goes to the king and he presents this dream to the king and he says, I know your dream. And he, he gives him the dream and he gives him the interpretation, uh, interpretation after he gives him the dream. And he says, the king says this to him. He says, Daniel, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings. Hallelujah. This is the king coming to him and saying, truly, your God is king. He is Lord. There is secrets, brothers and sisters, friends, that God wants to reveal to us here today. There are secrets that God still has for us that he wants to reveal to us. He says, call to me and I will show you great and unsearchable things which you do not know. There are things that we do not know. There are things that are still yet to be revealed to you. And God wants to use the things that he reveals to you to reveal to a generation today. Are you ready to pay the price? Are you ready to take on and begin to know your father in heaven? And take on those secrets and make him known to others. Daniel takes this secret, Daniel takes this interpretation, Daniel takes this dream and he, he makes it known to the king. He brings it before the king. And this is what gets me. Here's the king. He says, truly, your God is, he is a God of gods. He is a king of kings. But then the next chapter, something happens. Something, something, something else happened. It's actually only a few verses down. It says that this king, he, he builds an idol. He builds an image. He builds a, a an image for people to worship and he makes everybody worship it. And I'm thinking, how do you just go from saying God of gods to making an image and forcing everybody to worship this image? So many times in our life, yes, we know God. Yes, we worship God. Yes, we follow God. Yet there's images that come into our life. There's these things that come into our life that take the position that God owns in our life. What is it today that you are holding on to? What is that image in your life today that's blocking you from knowing God and making him known? I want you to ask yourself that right now. And I believe the Holy Spirit is here. And what he does is he teaches, he speaks, and he's speaking to you right now. And there are things right now at this moment that he is revealing to you and saying, I want you to take this out of your life. I want you to remove this. This is that image that you have begun to worship, that you have begun to put in my place. What is that image that is blocking you from knowing God? So this king, he forces everybody to, to worship this image. And, and there's these guys, this Daniel's friends. He who hangs with the wise becomes wise. These Daniel's friends stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to worship this golden thing because I know my king. You see, 
I believe our purpose on this earth and number one thing is knowing our king, knowing our God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I want you to look at this right here. It says, didn't I cast out, didn't I do all these things? I, I prophesied in your name. I, I, I did all this stuff in your name. In your name, I did it, Lord. I did everything. I served. I, 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 I brought the water. I did all I could do for you. And, and God says here one thing that I want you guys to really focus on right here, right now, at this moment. Get away from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. It's not about, yes, that's good. Yes, we need to do things for the Lord. But the number one thing that we are called to do is to know our Father, is to know our God, is to know our King, is to know the Abba. It's to know what, what it is that cries on the inside of us because there is something crying on the inside of us, crying, Abba, Father. There is a Father. We have a Father, not on this earth, but in heaven, in Almighty heaven, and he is the Lord of lords. He is the King of kings, and there's so much more to him that he wants to make known to us today. I never knew you. Do you know God? There's going to come a time where we stand before him. We all know people that have passed away. We all know people who have died, and, and they go somewhere. They go and they have to stand before God and there's going to come a time where me and you, we will have to stand before God and we will have to answer not, not, not for the prophesying. We will have to answer for that, but the main thing we'll have to answer for, did you know God? Do you know God? You know, you could come to this service you can be sitting here right now and you can be at home with your mind. I got to take care of this. I got to take care of that. I got to do that. And you can leave here today the same way you walked in here. Just like you can come into prayer, you can pray to God and receive nothing from God and not even connect to God. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. Do you know the shepherd's voice? I believe that God wants to raise up a generation after his voice, a generation that knows their father. It's not a, just, just serving, I do all this stuff for you and evangelize and, and preach the gospel and, and I'll, I'll post things and I'll, I'll say things to my friends and I'll text them and I'll, you know, sometimes in college I'll say something. But the most important thing, do you know God? Jesus, it says in Mark, he called the 12 disciples to himself. And then he paired them up two by two, and then he sent them out to, to cast out demons, to do uh, miracles. Before he sent them out, he put them together. Before he put them together, he brought them to himself. Before making God known, before going out and, and doing these things for God, the number one thing that you must do is know God, is come to God, is understand God. And if you come to God for anything else but God, you will miss the very thing. You will miss the very thing that we are purposed, that we are called, that we are predestined for is, is to know Him, is to know our loving Father. There's a story about Mary and Martha where Jesus comes over to their house and Martha's running around and trying to get everything done. She's trying to clean, she's trying to cook, she's trying to make a meal, and, and Mary's just sitting. And she's just staring at the face of Jesus, just watching him. But Martha's running around trying to, trying to do everything she can do, trying to take care of all, all she can do. Maybe you're here today and you're, you're doing all you can do for God. You're trying, to, you're trying to make it look nice for God. You're trying to make it look clean. You're trying to make him a meal and, and give him a meal. But, but God is saying, that's not what I want you to do today. The one thing that I want you to do today is to sit at the feet of me, is to fit, sit at the feet of Jesus. And to stare upon him, the perfecter of faith. He is. He is all. He is everything. 
And we are missing the very thing that we are called to do and be. In him. In him. You only abide fruit in him. You only be alive in him. You only be excited to go to church in him. You only want to come to church early when you're in him, when you're plugged in him. And I know it's simple and we all know it, but that's the very thing that we all forget to do and we don't do. Everything is after that right there. Google, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. They were designed to take your time. They were designed to take away that time with the Lord, to stop you. Your, your businesses, your finances, your works, your jobs, they want to take your time. They want to take away everything and anything that you have in your heart towards Jesus. And it's up to us to hold and stand our ground like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And stand our ground, regardless if everybody might be bending down to these idols and, and everyone might go out to eat, everyone might go out to hang out, everyone might have successful businesses. You know what? I'm going to let this one go this week because you know what? I want to go home and I want to sit at the feet of Jesus. You know what? I'm not going to go to the Applebee's. You know why? Because I'm going to go home and I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. Because that's all I care about. That's all I need. There's nothing else that will satisfy my soul. No relationship. No nothing. No nothing. No no one will satisfy you like Jesus. He is everything. He is all. When he comes, he comes in the fullness of it all. He is all. Do you know him? Verse 18, chapter 3 of Daniel. So here, they stand their ground, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody else is bowing down, but they're like, no, you know what? I'm going to stand my ground. I'm not going to bow down to this idol. I'm not going to bow down to this image. It says, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. The Bible says, wide is a gate that leads to destruction and narrow is the path that leads to righteousness. And few choose it. But many choose the wide gate. Many choose the wide path. Which path do you choose today? They said, let it be known to you. I don't care about the fear. I don't care about what it looks like to you. I don't care if everyone's, oh, I'm going to go in the burning furnace? Okay, take me in there. I, I must stand for my king regardless of what's going on around me. The Bible says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. The power of God. There is a power in God. There is a power on the inside of us. And he who raised Jesus from the grave now lives on the inside of us. Every single one of us, Jesus lives inside of us. Paul tells the church of Corinthians, I don't come to you in wisdom or, or knowledge or anything. I come to you with one thing. I come to you with the power and the manifestation of the spirit. That's not what's important, the power of God. God wants to raise up a generation today that moves in the power of God. Are you ready to move in the power of God? The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In order to walk in the spirit, you must be filled in the spirit. In order to be filled in the spirit, you must come to God because he is, right? So you come to him, you get filled in the spirit and you can walk and you can be victorious in your life. Then you can walk in the power of God. Then everything else flows from that. You're knowing God. Your fruit of that is making God known. You, you, you can't just sit there knowing God. You, you just, you, you can't. You, you go and you have, to, you have to evangelize to somebody. Just, you know, you ever seen a drug addict on withdrawals? They need the drugs. You just, you can't. You can't not do it. You can't witness about God. You can't, you can't go and, and serve somebody. You can't go and pray for somebody. You have to do something. And Daniel and his friends stood there and like, throw me, throw me in the fire. They went in the fire. 
The fire got hot. The people that threw them in there got burnt. They weren't afraid. You know, there came a time where I was able to go to Africa and I heard about these witch doctors. So I said, I want to see a witch doctor. And I came home and I prayed. I said, Lord, I want to, I want to see this witch doctor that they talk about. All of the land in Africa is afraid of these witch doctors. And the next day happened to roll around. We went evangelizing. The first house we came to, the translator starts slowing down. I'm like, bro, what's going on? He said, it's a witch doctor's house. I'm like, perfect. That's what I prayed for. So I laid hands on him and I prayed for him. I said, bro, we got something greater than any witch doctor out there. We have a power on the inside of us. And what is impossible with man is possible with God. And what he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So I come to this witch doctor. The witch doctor goes inside. He puts on a white robe. He comes outside. And I, and I start sharing a message with him. And I say, I have a message for you. A message of hope. A message of peace. I've driven many miles. Would you like to hear it? He says, yes. So I start sharing the gospel to him from point A to point Z. And I said, would you like to receive Jesus into your heart thinking, well, I'm done now. He said, yes. So he gets down on his knees. He brings his whole family out. Everybody gets on their knees. They all receive Jesus into their heart. I start walking out. He's like, hold on. I have something to say. I said, what's going on? He said, before you came here, last night I had a dream and you were in my dream and your team was in my dream and the same message you just shared with me, you were sharing with me in my dream. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you that God makes a way before you. He makes a way before you. He already has everything. If you're going to go into the fire, he's already there before you even enter. Hallelujah. He's already there in your fire today, in your troubles today, in your hardships today. The fear, he knows your fear. He knows the, what's going on around you. And he's sitting there and standing on with my arms wide open, ready. I'm ready. Just come and come. I want to make myself known to you. And I want to know you. I want to know you. Are you ready for God to know you? Do you want to know God? So they didn't die. They come out of this fire. And the king tells them, surely this is the God of gods. And he Actually, at the end of his life, he, he says a whole little, like, prayer, and he says, worshiping God, and then that's where it moves on to making God known. I believe that we're called to make God known. After, first we seek God, we know God, and then we go out and make him known. Earlier, we were taking a test, and I didn't see a lot of you guys post that you go out and minister, share the gospel, and... You know why? You're afraid. Let's be real. You're afraid. Right? What am I going to say? What if they don't accept me? What am I going to do? It ain't about you. Does that help you? Amen. It's not about us. We, we take our step to God, and he takes his step to us. That's what happens. You, you, you don't know what to say. Man, I still don't know what to say. I just say, God, I'm going to step out, and you, you give me the words. Amen. Jesus loves you? Bro, you're crazy, man. I did it, right? You start there, and you move on. Can I pray for you? What can I pray for? The other day, me and Boris were in a restaurant, and we were sitting there, and Boris starts ministering the gospel to the lady, and she said, that's deep. She said, that's, that hits right there. All he said was the gospel. And it wasn't that, it was, it, he didn't share it with all details. He just said, Jesus died for you. And she said, that's deep, man. I never heard it like that. There's nothing more deeper than Jesus. There's nothing more deeper than the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. People are in need to hear this gospel. People are in need to hear about Jesus. People need to know that they are sinners, that they are lost. People need to know that there is a Savior that came and they, he died for their sins. He died so that they can come to him. And that baggage, they don't need to carry it. Jesus takes it away from you. So he shares the gospel message. And I ask her, do you have any pain? She says, yes, I do. My feet hurt. I said, can we pray for you? So we lay hands on her and we pray for her. Oh, what that noise is. Ah, that's how he tries to get every one of you. I'm telling you, a lot of times I go out evangelizing and my phone starts ringing. 
telling you, when it gets good, the devil comes in. There's only two things that can take the service and the flow of the message is the, the speaker and the sound people. Right? So we pray for her foot and we ask her, how do you feel? She's like, whoa. She's like, I got the goosies. It's like, yeah, that's the Holy Spirit. He's touching you. We have something on the inside of us that is greater than what's in the world. If only we'd step out. And we just say, can I pray for you? They'll deny you. It's okay. They don't deny you. They deny Jesus on the inside of you. And you get on moving. You'll never see them again. I believe that God wants us to take a step of faith. Faith is not seeing the things. It's just you hope for it. So you step out in faith, believing that God will come. But it comes back to faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So you must come to God and hear from God. Daniel knew his God. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego knew their God. They knew him. So when the time came and the fire came, they said, I ain't afraid. I know my God. I know my God. He's going to take me out of this. You know what? Has he ever let you down? He's never let you down. He won't let you down again. I believe God is speaking different things to your hearts today. Maybe it's to go to Bible school. Maybe it's just to dedicate time to just seek the face of Jesus. You've been so busy with, with everything. You've been so busy with school. Take a day off. Go somewhere and pray. Seek, seek him. You can leave here and be the same, but the only way to cultivate what God started here on this weekend is if you go home and you, you do what was spoken. You go and you seek him. You seek him again and again. And again, you might not do it the right way right away, but just keep coming. Keep coming back. And then when the fire does come, you'll be able to stand through it. Then you'll be able to shine Jesus wherever you go. I want everybody to stand up right now. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, it says that, know this in the last days, prayerless times. Prayerless means dangerous. Dangerous times will come. Because people will be lovers of themselves. They will be boasters, proud. The reason why people aren't able to come into the throne of God or the presence of God because they're, a lot of times we become boasters of ourselves. We become our own idols. We, we become boasters of our money and, oh, my, my business is successful or my job, look at this, look at my career, I'm, I'm going for a doctor. Yeah, what's up? No. Paul says, if I'm a boast about anything, you know what I'm a boast about? I've been shipwrecked. I've been beaten by rods. That's what I'm a boast about. That's what I'm a boast about. It says at the end of this verse, it says that lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. It will look like you are serving God. It will look like you are praying, but you're the very thing that's not what you're doing. It will look like you know God, but you don't even know Him. Why? Because all of these other things are captivating your heart. These golden statues, they've taken place of that, that property. But I'll tell you something good today. Jesus is standing at the door today and He's knocking. And he's saying, I'm standing at the door and I knock. He who opens the door, I'll come in and I'll eat with you. I'll clean up. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you want to clean up, Lord. We thank you that you want to renew, you want to restart here today, God. I know... People have come here for that. I've come here for just for that very thing, Lord. To be renewed in you, Jesus. God, touch us. Mark us here today, God. Mark us here today, God. Set us on fire for you, Jesus. I know there's some of you here right now that it's stirring up in your heart. God's stirring up in your heart. I don't know, something of this message spoke to you. There's, I don't know what part of it, but God spoke to you today. 
maybe it's to know God, maybe it's to make him known. I don't know what it was, but you know. The Bible says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Those of you who feel like this was for me, whatever it is that God's speaking to you right now, I want you to just make your way quickly up here. Before you and God. Before you and God. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Don't look around. Come, 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 come. I believe God's going to touch some of you right now. As you're making your way up here, I believe chains are going to break off of you. There's going to be things that are going to be just broken off of you. The, the fear that's been bothering you, the depression, is just going to be broken off of you as you're making your way up here. That is what God does. The Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And God's freedom is in this place. Don't run for your neighbor. Don't run for who's around you. Run to Jesus as the woman with the issue of blood. She didn't care about the crowd around Jesus. She knew one thing and one thing only. The thing that she needed, the thing that she desired was Jesus. Jesus had the answer and I don't have the answer for you. Nobody here has the answer for you, but I'll tell you who does. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, Jesus, the Messiah. He is here today in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, Lord, we lift up our voices. God, I pray for every person that has come out here today. Father, that is calling out to you. You said that if we call unto you, that you will show us great and unsearchable things which we do not know show us oh God show us your glory show us oh God we want to see you we want to see you father God in the name of Jesus we pray in Jesus mighty name I declare and decree of freedom in the spirit in this place right now in Jesus mighty name every fear I command you to be gone in Jesus mighty name right now every spirit of depression be gone every spirit of lust I bind you and I command you to let loose in Jesus mighty name right now right now in the name of Jesus I declare a freedom in the spirit every bondage let loose let loose in Jesus name I take authority over every spirit of suicide and I command you to leave in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name every weariness every sadness in the name of Jesus nightmares anybody that's been having nightmares put just put your hand on your head right now in the name of Jesus every nightmare be gone right now no more nightmares in Jesus mighty name in whom the sun says it's free. It's free indeed. We call upon the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb that was slain in this place right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, don't pass anybody by. Receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. Church, I want you to lift up your hands right now and I want you to call out to God wherever you're at. Wherever you're at, we want Jesus. We need Jesus. That's it. Oh, Lord. Oh, we need you, God. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. Some of you just need to cry out to him right now. You've been holding walls in front of you. There's, I don't care how tough you are. Call, cry out to him. He's here right now. I don't want you to go home and, and weep at home. He's here right now. Don't miss him. Don't miss him. Receive. Receive. Receive in Jesus' mighty name. 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 Let every hindrance, every wall be gone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Of freedom right now. In Jesus' name. If you feel like you want to, you didn't come to the altar and you want another call right now, this is for you. Come, 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 come. God is here. God is here. He's here to renew you. In Jesus' name.
knees right now. Wherever you are, get on your knees. Cry out to God. He's here right now. Wherever you're at, He's here. He's here. Let Him touch you in a fresh way. It's not about the encounter you had yesterday. It's not about the man that you had yesterday. He has new manna. He has new experience for you here today. For such a time as this, God has chosen for you to be here today. Receive. Receive in Jesus' mighty name. Raise your hands and cry out. here right now in this place this very hour those of you who have any kind of pain in your body any kind of back pain shoulder pain arm pain I believe that God wants to heal you I want you to raise your hand and put your hand wherever the pain is wherever you are in the audience everywhere everywhere put your put your hand where it's hurting and we're gonna stand together right now we're gonna pray and declare the healing It's by his wounds that we are healed in the name of Jesus, right now, every headache, every backache, be gone. New discs, new joints, new earlobes, ears, be healed in Jesus' name. New necks, be restored in the name of Jesus, right now. Arm pain, shoulder pain, leg pain, be gone. In Jesus' name, I take authority over every pain in this place right now. And I command you to leave in Jesus' mighty name right now. Nose pain, headaches, stomach pain, bacteria, diseases, be gone. In Jesus' name right now, every cancer cell, I command you to dry out. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. In Jesus' mighty name, and I command you to leave. In Jesus' every depression, be gone. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now, no more backaches. No more headaches. In Jesus' name. New discs, new joints, new muscles, new ligaments. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, I want you to move, those of you. Who had pain, I want you to move, move around, move around. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your healing, God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to wave your hand if you feel a difference. There's no more pain. Wave your hand, wave your hand. Praise God, praise God. Yes, praise God. Right now, I'm gonna make another call. Those of you that are here right now, maybe you've dedicated your life to Jesus before, but it was long ago, and, and you've noticed today that you're farther away from God than you expected. Maybe today you realize that you haven't known God. Maybe today you wanna rededicate your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never received Jesus into your heart. Today is the time, today is your day to receive him into your heart. The Bible says confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead and you will be saved. So when you stand before God, You'll be saved. Those of you who want to receive Jesus or rededicate your life to Jesus here today and throw away your old life and, and go after the new life that God has for you, I want you to raise your hand before God right now. Jesus' name. Yes, we got hands over. Those of you uh, in the back as well, raise your hand if you want to receive Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead for my sins. I ask you to wash me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and to live in me 
to lead me. Help me know you and make you known in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just worship you right now. Oh, you're so good, God. We thank you for the salvation is in here. We thank you for the healings, God. You alone are worthy of the honor and the praise. The Bible says where one sinner comes to repentance, the whole heaven rejoices. There is a party going on in heaven for you here today and in heaven. Let's just stand up right now wherever you're at and just go into worship for the next 30 seconds, half a minute or some minute, and just with worship in our hearts, thanking God that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever.